I want you to listen closely to my interview with the one and only Herman Cain. Um, looks like he's in the presidential race from the Republican side, and there is nobody on the list of presidential candidates or wannabes who lights up my phones or my email inbox like this man, Herman Cain. And I will take your phone calls in the wake of the interview. Herman Cain is our keynote speaker tomorrow at the third annual Tax Day Tea Party at Lake Eola. I'll be the MC from 4 until 6. Herman Cain, welcome to Bud Hedinger Live. I'm looking forward to introducing you and hearing your message the, tomorrow. Good morning to you. Mr. Hedinger, it is my pleasure. Thanks, Bud. Happy to be with you. And I got to tell you, I'm excited up about being at your Tea Party event on Friday because this sleep giant called We the People has awakened and it's not going back to sleep. And to the dismay of the liberals, it's getting bigger and stronger. And your event is another example of why. And I know that you attended something like and addressed something like 40 Tea Party uh, rallies last year alone. What will your keynote message be to us tomorrow at Lake Eola? My keynote message tomorrow will revolve around three simple things. Stay informed, because stupid people are running America. This administration has demonstrated that he's playing the American public for a fool. Just look at his speech that he gave yesterday, talking about his proposal to bring down the deficit. His upside-down economics are exactly the same as they have been for the last two years, which is they want more taxes to provide less benefits to the American people. It doesn't work that way. Secondly, we've got to stay involved. The bigger these rallies get, the more effective that we are in sending the message that the American people are not going to take it anymore. And the third one is to stay inspired, because we have to continue to believe, as we demonstrated last November the 2nd, that we can take back our government, we can get control of the Senate, maintain control of the House, and that we can put a conservative in the White House in 2012. That's my message tomorrow at the Tea Party rally. Well, I have to ask you, I want to get to your um, expected presidential run here in just a moment, but uh, your reaction to the president's speech. To yes. me, we needed a policy speech. Paul Ryan was offended by the fact that that was not the focus, that it was all about bashing his plan and what the Republicans planned to do. It was all about soaking the rich, scaring the poor, and it was all about kicking off his reelection campaign. That's how I saw the speech yesterday. How did you see it, and how did you react to it? I saw it exactly the same, Bud, and it's typical class warfare. It's typical empty rhetoric. It's a lot of talk, but no meat. I was, quite frankly, not disappointed because I didn't expect much out of the speech to begin with. All of the play up lead up to some of the speeches that the president has been doing ever since he's been in office, they some of the media spend more time talking about the speech is coming, the speech is coming, and then when it gets here it's a big flat you know, it's a big flat failure, like the State of the Union speeches. So I wasn't disappointed because I wasn't expecting much. And Representative Ryan should have been insulted with the bashing of his plan, but this is all this administration knows how to do. First of all, they don't understand economics. President Obama has consistently shown he does not understand how to stimulate this economy because the bottom line on his speech was they want more taxes, more government that's going to produce less growth. We know that, but they want to do it anyway. Does Paul Ryan have it right, or do you believe that that's a starting point for getting this country back on its feet and saving us from economic collapse? Do you see it differently in any way than Paul Ryan does? I believe that Representative Ryan has it right in, in, as a good start. The other thing that I would go after aggressively would be to take Social Security and utilize the mechanism of personal retirement accounts in order to give an option to younger workers who would be able to put a portion of their payroll taxes in an account with their name on it. The small country of Chile did it 30 years ago to wean themselves off of a system just like ours, and they did it. I know we can do it. The reason that President Bush wasn't able to get it done when he proposed the idea is that it was demagogued as privatization. It is not privatization. So I would add to Representative Ryan's proposal the restructuring Social Security because we've got to do that or we're never going to get our hands around the growth in the federal spending. 
Talking with Herman Cain here, and Herman Cain, uh, those dulcet tones, you know he's a radio talk show host, and he has <laughs> been for years, and one of the best. Um, you're also, of course, a giant in, 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 in business, best known as the former chairman and CEO of Godfather's Pizza. What a success story. You were also uh, the uh, deputy chairman and, uh, and chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank out in Kansas City. You have an amazing resume, married a, a couple of children, and in January, you announced you had formed an exploratory committee for a potential run for the Republican presidential nomination. Uh, sir, when are you going to decide whether you are fully in? I will decide in weeks and not months. And I got to tell you, we set out four criteria that we were going to evaluate to determine whether or not it was going to be a go, no go. I can tell you that those five, four criteria were how many volunteers would respond to the HermanCain.com website? That's H-E-R-M-A-N-C-A-I-N.com. The second criteria was going to be how much media presence we would be able to get, being a relatively unknown. And thirdly, what type of presence we would be able to create on the Internet. And fourthly, would we be able to raise money? I can tell you that on the first three, we have exceeded our expectations, and on the fourth one, we are meeting our expectations. So things are going great. As an example, at two weeks after we launched the Presidential Exploratory website, we had over 30,000 volunteers to sign up to work on a Herman Cain for President campaign from all over the country, bud. We now have over 100,000 volunteers, and we are looking for more. So I can just tell you that that is a great sign of encouragement for me to make a decision to do it, and we will be making one in weeks, not months. We'll look forward to it, and we hope you get in. I think you'd, be, you'd add so much to the race here. Uh, is there any possibility you might consider being a number two on, on a, on a Republican ticket, and is there someone you admire more than anyone else in the field of GOP contenders? I don't. I wouldn't say that I admire anyone more. Uh, there are several people that I could be the number two person with. And Who would, would they be? Depend upon. It would all depend upon. Give me a couple. Uh, I could. I could. I could be the number two for Mike Huckabee because I respect his leadership and his communications skills. Uh, if Mitt Romney were to get the nomination, which uh, it's looking less and less uh, like that's going to be the case. I could be a number two with them. The key to me being a number two, quite frankly, Bud, is whether or not it would be someone who would utilize my skills and talents to help them, not just be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, ceremonial position. I like to fix stuff. And if someone's going to put me in a box, I'm not interested. But if someone is going to allow me to truly be a part of that team in addressing the myriad of problems we have in this country, then I, I'm certainly open to that. Well, in, in closing, I loved your comment a week or two ago about the fact that the nation got all excited about electing a black president, you know. But what, what, what was the comment you made that, that, they, that they can make it right by electing you? Yeah, I said, well, okay, now that they've gotten over electing the first black president, let's elect the correct one this time around. Let's get it right. You know, and it's not about color. It's about content and character. Amen. So hopefully people are over this color thing, and we can elect someone who brings some real economic and leadership skills to the job, which we so badly need. You are an impressive patriotic American. Herman Cain, uh, our keynote speaker at the, at the Tax Day Tea Party at Lake Eola tomorrow from 4 until 6. I'll look forward to being with you as your MC and introducing you and hearing your message. Thanks for coming to Orlando. It's a pleasure. I look forward to it, bud. Thank there we go. Herman Cain. Your reaction.